Without the ones like you, who work tirelessly to keep things running, everything would suddenly stop. Hospitals, factories, schools, and power plants, they all depend on you. No matter the weather, emergency, or time of day, you're the ones who get it done. At Granger, we're here for you 24-7, with supplies and solutions for every industry, and access to product specialists ready to help. Call, click Grainger.com, or just stop by. Granger for the ones who get it done. You coming to bed, hon? Yep, honey, I'll be right there. Just got to turn out the light. Ow! Ow! Some things never change. Like your kids always leaving tiny toys on the floor for you to step on. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Sweetie, I think I left the downstairs light on. P please don't make me go. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. Hello, and welcome back to another edition of the Sports Ethos DFS Today podcast. I am your host, Mike Capatria. Ride it solo. It's wonderful January 23rd slate. We got nine games on the main card to talk about. It's a nice Sunday. Br up bright and early, got the coffee cup full, ready to kind of dive into things, dissect. And just my initial thoughts on this slate. It looks like, uh, looks like we got a few guys, uh, like egregiously priced underpriced that is making the player pool pretty narrow with the nine game slate so we're not going to sit here and talk about everybody just talk about the guys that i think the biggest impact on the slate and guys that uh i'm going to be playing myself so before we dive into anything just a quick shout out to our presenting sponsor over at thrive fantasy guys come prop up with us what are you waiting for thrive fantasy is the number one daily prop bet site for both fantasy sports and esports with Thrive, you eliminate countless hours of research and focus only on the top-tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. Choose 10 of 20 available plop, uh, player prop bets. Build your lineup. Each plop, uh, plop. Each prop is assigned to fantasy value for both the over and under based on how likely it is to hit. Hit the most props, rack up the most points, and win your share of a prize pool. Thrive has over 50,000 guaranteed prizes weekly for the NBA and has awarded over $6 million so far. So head over there, use the promo code ETHOS, E-T-H-O-S, when you sign up and you receive a 100% instant first deposit match on up to $100. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store, Play Store, or visit their website at www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop today. All right. We got a good little slate here, one that uh, it's pretty enticing. So we're going to start off with the first game. We have three games that tip off at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We have the L.A. Lakers traveling to Miami, taking on the Heat here. Uh, as of right now, let's check the lines. Looks like this game's coming in at 216.5 game total. Miami being favored by five points. Four Lakers, man. They can't, uh, even with Miami dealing with their injuries, they can't catch a break from Vegas. And rightfully so. I'm not going to sit here and say they should. Uh, big news, Anthony Davis is questionable. So there's a chance he could return in this one. LeBron James is probable. Kendrick Nunn remains out, as well as Sekou. And for the Heat, we still have Tyler Hero and the health and uh, safety protocols. Kyle Lowry dealing with some personal reasons. Uh, Markeith Boris, Casey Akpala, Victor Oladipo all rolled out. And then P.J. Tucker is questionable. So we'll start off here with L.A. Honestly, keeping it short and sweet, like I said, I got to keep my player pool small. I don't have much of interest in any single player on this team. Uh, it's just that simple for me. We have nine games. We have possibly Anthony Davis coming back, which would definitely put a little bit of a, a wrinkle in LeBron James's game uh, as far as his upside. And I haven't played Boston Westbrook, and I couldn't tell you how long this season, which is a little out of the norm. I get it. The price tag is finally to a spot where we can consider him at 8400 but the possibility of Anthony Davis returning gives me some pause. And I'm not playing Anthony Davis at under 10 k just yet. I want to see that minutes total get worked back up, and I imagine he is limited in this one. The Miami side of things is a little bit different, though. Definitely a little, uh, definitely a little bit more action, I think, will be over here. Uh, Jimmy Butler coming in as the most expensive player, 8700 Yep. Absolutely worth it. I uh, definitely we're going to have some ownership in Jimmy today. He's coming off of two down performances, but I'm not reading too much into those. One of those games, he played 15 minutes. 
uh, due to the ejection. And the uh, last game, just the shot attempts weren't there. But the thing that I am most interested in is the ancillary stats. I mean, this dude's putting up close to triple doubles in all the games he's playing minutes without Kyle Lowry. Eight and eight in that last one. We saw against Toronto, he did hit that triple double with a 19, 10, and 10. 8,700 is just a little too cheap with Kyle Lowry off the floor. Now, granted, Bam Adebayo is back, so there is going to be another player to handle some of the usage there. But Jimmy is certainly in play at a fantastic price tag of 8,700. And for everything I just said about Bam, or Jimmy, goes the same for Bam. Uh, 7,800 feels like it's priced right around where he should be. Maybe a little hair under. Probably should be more like the 82 to 83 range. Uh, but the Lakers play at extremely fast pace. Their defense is absolutely trash. 7,800. I have no issues getting one of these guys in most of my lineups. I'll probably end up on more Jimmy Butler. And you can even look at some of these ancillary options like Gabe Vincent at 5,100. He's been drawing the start. He's playing heavy minutes, 38 and 37 over the last two games. Scored at least 30 DK points in both those. So I'm good with Gabe. I prefer him over stress ever so slightly, although stress will be the lower owned player. A little bit more versatile based on his shooting guard and small forward eligibility. So I wouldn't fault you if you wanted to look that way. Um, I prefer stress over Caleb. And I prefer Vincent, I think, over both. Moving on to the next game. Chicago Bulls traveling to Orlando, taking on the Magic. For the Bulls, Lonzo Ball, Alex Caruso, Derek Jones Jr., Patrick Williams, all rolled out. Levine is doubtful, as well as Javante Green. So it seems like those guys may be right around the corner, just not quite ready yet this week. So you got to keep your eye on that. Uh, this game is coming in at a 216.5 game total. Chicago being favored by seven points. I guess I haven't been on a show since the uh, Alex Caruso injury, and I will just say Grayson Allen is trash. She is a trash can. Uh, you know, we're not going to ever see what the league should do as far as suspensions. I mean, Jokic missed one game, and Markeith Morris hasn't played a, a game in over, like, it feels like 35 to 40 games. Uh, so I just don't see them actually taking a firm stance on this. But, I mean, Grayson Allen uh, has a reputation for this. It, it's been dating back to his Duke days and, Dude, just a trash bag, like, you know, tripping players, hurting players. Like, that was such an unnecessary foul. Uh, and obviously, the refs saw that what everybody else saw, immediately gave it a flagrant to ejected him. So, I mean, hopefully it's more than one game. I, I think that that should just go without saying. But it's always worth saying that this dude's a, a ball of trash. So, looking at this Chicago team, we'll start off with the away team here. Uh, Vooch, DeRozan, they're both in play, but this isn't the best game environment for me. I think if anybody, I'd probably lean Vooch over DeRozan ever so slightly, just based on it. We get a little, we get a little narrative involved here, a little revenge narrative. Uh, they're both in play, but I think when it comes down to it, you know, DeRozan, I think I'd rather play Butler. Uh, Vooch, there's some other centers on this slate I have interest in. So I'm not going to just cross them out just yet, but if I'm looking anywhere, it's probably going to be these, you know, mid-tier ancillary options and like Kobe White and uh, Dasunmu. So, the Sumu, I don't love that price tag at 5,900. I think that goes without saying. But we've seen three straight games out of this guy outside of that last one against Milwaukee, which was a low-scoring game, 90-94, where he's put up at least 38 DK points. He's getting usage. He's their best perimeter defender. He's going to play heavy minutes. In the past four games, his lowest minute total is 38 minutes. So, he is in play. It's just, you know, he's going to probably end up drawing some ownership, and there's definitely some downside to it. But I, I think he's probably going to be the guy I end up with the most ownership on this Bulls team. More than one in three people will face cancer in their lifetime. Unfortunately, fear can stop you from getting your cancer screening, but it won't stop cancer. Early detection can save your life. Don't wait for symptoms to appear to act. Cancer screening is safe, effective, and accessible for everyone, including free or low-cost screening programs. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com right now for free screening resources and recommendations from the American Cancer Society. Don't wait. Early detection can save your life. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com today. Cancer Screen Info. Com. To show you how easy it is to file a claim with Geico, we hired a nature show host. In a native habitat of a suburban driveway, the poor victim of a broken windshield is left assessing his vehicle utterly helpless. Well, not true. If he's got Geico, he can file a claim online, over the phone, or with his handy mobile app. But like a lone gazelle, he'll suddenly be left to fend for himself, awaiting his terrible fate. Nope. Geico will assign him a designated claims team to help him out, too. So the gazelle gets his car fixed and everything. Wow. Nature is so cool. Geico. Great service. Without all the drama. Excuse me as I take uh, the quick coffee break. Uh, for Orlando. Not much of interest for me anywhere. I mean, Cole Anthony's now getting down to a price tag where... 
we have to have a little bit of interest at 6,400. He's had a bunch of down games in a row. You could throw out that game against Philly. He got into foul trouble very, very early. He even got into a little bit of foul trouble in uh, in that last one. So, although it says he only finished with three fouls in both those games, they were early fouls. So, because of those ticky tack fouls, really limited his minutes total. I wouldn't be, uh, you know, clamoring and saying that Jalen Suggs is out here taking his job or anything like that. Cole Anthony's still their point guard. Still going to be that no matter what. Uh, and he's going to have to play probably pretty significant minutes if this game stays close. So he does make for a solid GPP pivot. I don't expect many people to draw his ownership based on his recent box scores, but just not somebody I'm getting overweight on necessarily either. In the last of the 6 o'clock Eastern Standard games, we have Portland traveling to Toronto, taking on the Raptors in this one. There should be some fantasy goodness to go around with Damian Lillard, Larry Nance Jr., Norman Powell, Cody Zeller all ruled out, Nasir Little, Dennis Smith Jr., both probable. And then for the Raptors, Ken Birch still dealing with that nose fracture. Goran Dragic not with the team. Both of those guys are out. Looking at the game total, it's 214.5. Toronto being favored by 7.5 points. Portland, it's simple for me. I'm going to have shares of CJ McCollum at 7,500. Spread, 7.5 points. Doesn't really worry me too, too much. Uh, We know that Portland could get blown out very easily. But 7,500 is just too cheap for this guy who's going to have a boatload of usage. The minutes are back up to where we're seeing him. Played 36 against Boston. Ended up dropping 41.75 DK points. Uh, He's going to play a lot of point guard. He's going to play off ball. Regardless, if he's taken anywhere between, you know, 18 to 22 shot attempts at this kind of usage and at this price tag, we got to have interest in him. Again, not the greatest defensive matchup. We don't like to see too many people going against Toronto. They have a lot of length. They have a lot of speed on the wings. So there's definitely the the downside in there. But I'm just looking at the upside in a nine-game slate. That's one of the things I target the most is what could this player do, especially because I play a lot of GPPs. On the Toronto side of the ball, I'm not paying 9200 for Siakam in this matchup. It's a good one. Don't get me wrong. If there was a matchup, you're probably going to pay for him. I guess it would be this. But I just think that's a little too expensive. At 9200 with all these other options that we have, I don't see myself going there. I think Fred Van Vliet is a fantastic option, especially if you're looking at pivots off of some of these big point guard options that, we're, that we will talk about. We haven't really got to just yet. Uh, I do like Freddie Van Vliet. I think 8800 in this matchup suits him well. Uh, he put up 40 DK points on this team earlier in the year, and he did so on only 13 shot attempts. Uh, he hasn't taken anything less than 17 shot attempts over the past five. Two games with 20 plus. Three of those games, he had at least 10 assists. Freddie has a very safe floor based on his assist usage, and when the shot attempts are falling for him, you can pretty much write home 40 to 50 DK points. I mean, he's been shooting pretty poor over the past four games with 35 percent, 20 percent, 41 percent, 35, and then 29. So. This is a nice little get-back game for the shooting perspective things. There's not really good wing options that can guard him. As much as I said about CJ McCollum, he's not that good defensively. So I'm good with Freddie. If you wanted to take stabs at any of these ancillary guys, I wouldn't fault you either, whether it's a Scotty Barnes or an OG. I'd probably prefer Scotty over OG. Fourth game, one that will be loaded with fantasy goodness. Atlanta Hawks traveling to Charlotte, taking on the Hornets. Bogdan Bogdanovich has been ruled out. Danilo Gallinari, Kevin Werder are both questionable. Jalen Johnson in the G League after blowing up in the G League. And it looks like everybody but Jalen McDaniels over there for the Hornets will be good to go. This game has the highest game total of the night. I'm sorry, second highest at 237. It's a pick 'em. This is going to be an extremely fantasy friendly game. You're going to want some shares in this. It's probably going to be the highest owned game. We'll start off with the Hawks. I just talked about how uh, our boy Freddie Van Fleet would be a good pivot off of some of these point guards. One of those point guards would be Trey Young. Uh, this is a picture perfect matchup for Trey Young. It's going to be a fast paced game, very little defense. We know that the Hornets are one of the worst three point shooting defensive teams in the league, and we know that this should be a game where Trey Young's probably seen 10 three pointers. No doubt about it. He's worth spending up on at 10 3. Is he my favorite spend up? He's definitely one of them. Uh, there's no doubt about it. If I'm in that 10K range, I think that this is the spot I'm looking. If I'm in the 11K range, we'll get to Harden and guys like Jokic later, where you know, you might want to look that way. But in the 10K range, I think Trey Young is the best and most firm option for me. Clint Capella, if we knew that he was playing uh, a full, ample amount of minutes, sure, why not? But he played his first game back, played 26 minutes, so we don't know exactly what kind of workload and what kind of minutes total he's going to have in this one. And then for the wings, got to keep an eye on guys like Bogdanovich. I'm sorry, Bogdanovich has already been rolled out. Gallinari and Kevin Werder because... Uh, if one or both are ruled out, we can go right back to the well with DeAndre Hunter. He's got at least 30 DK points in the last three games. He would certainly be an option for us. He's in play regardless, but obviously much safer and much more secure option. 
if we see those guys rolled out. Just more usage. Uh, on the Charlotte side of the ball, a lot to like over here as well. Lamella Ball is just underpriced. Uh, I let off at the top saying some guys were egregiously underpriced. Yeah, he's one of those. He's all the way down to 8,200 at this point. It's a picture-perfect matchup, just like it was for Trey Young for him. Going against this Atlanta team, they play it at a fast pace. They have one of the league's worst defenses. Uh, we know that Trey Young is one of the worst defensive point guards in the league. Now, granted, he might find himself matched up a little bit more on Terry Rozier, making Terry Rozier an option in a good GPP pivot off of LaMelo. But anytime we talked about it, LaMelo being under 10K, he's in play. He's all the way down to 8,200. Now, that last game was a blowout. He only played 26 minutes in that one. Uh, outside of that, though, game prior, 46, 46. Sign me up. I I'm going to have probably overweight shares of LaMelo Ball on this one. I don't see why you would look elsewhere. I mean, for the point per dollar, he might be one of the best players on the slate. And like I said, you could look at some of these other options as pivots. Like if you don't, if you know, if you think that Lamelo is going to draw that extremely high ownership, which granted he probably will. I think Terry Rozier makes a whole lot of sense. He's all the way up at 7,700, has dual eligibility. Uh, but the past four games, he has a floor of 44 DK points. This is a fantastic matchup. I get it. The pivot's there for you, but I'll probably still have to be a little bit more overweight on Lamelo. But he would be the pivot off of him. No one else I'm really looking at or excited about on this team. I wouldn't fault you if I wanted to look at a Bridges uh, at 8,300. But then now we're kind of drifting up towards the Jimmy Butler territory. He absolutely torched this team already this season in two matchups. He's scoring 53 D and a half DK points average in 39 minutes. So I wouldn't fault you if you wanted to go that way. If you're if you're looking to get exposure to this game and you're not looking to do it with Lamelo. Bridges would probably be the player, and Bridges will certainly be less owned than LaMelo as well. On to the fifth game of the night, Philadelphia 76ers traveling to San Antonio. Taking on the Spurs in this one. For the Sixers, Seth Curry, Danny Green, Shake Milton, Paul Reed, Ben Simmons, Matisse Thibel, all ruled out. And then for the Spurs, it's just, uh, they're pretty much good to go. It's really just Zach Collins, who's out due to conditioning. Uh, everybody else in the G League. As of right now, this game's coming in a 222 and a half game or 222 game total, no half there. Uh, Philly being favored by one and a half points. There's a half. Uh, we'll start off with the Sixers here. I think with uh, Seth Curry out, we, we're most likely going to be looking at you know a guy like Cork Boss getting the biggest bump here. He's 4K, played 39 minutes in that last game, didn't do much at all. It was two of seven shooting. Only not uh, nailed one of his six three-pointers. And, I mean, that's really what it's going to come down to. He's been struggling from behind the arc over the past five games. Uh, realistically, it's a good bounce-back spot for him. I don't mind looking at him. I think there's a lot of that 4K value. But if you're looking at someone who probably won't have a lot of ownership, he has that dual eligibility. Certainly an option. And I think we could look back at Tobias Harris. Uh, 7200 It's a decent price tag for him. I've been really jumping on the bandwagon ever since he fell below that 7K mark. and it's It's been fruitful. 43.25 and then 38 and a half DK points over his last two games. Should see a couple of increased shot attempts with no Seth Curry. They're going to need him to stretch out the floor a little bit from deep. So I, I don't mind looking at him. He's not a foundational core play of mine, but he's certainly an option. Again, won't fault you if you want to go to Embiid. I'd rather just spend the 700 less, I think, and go to Trey Young. But I, I really wouldn't fault you. I'm never going to talk you out of Embiid. This dude's having a quietly uh, underrated MVP type year. Over the past two games, he's got 67.75 and then 77 in DK points. Played this team earlier in the year, put up 58 against them. So I'll never fault you if you want to go that way. And again, it's going to be usage probably going for the big guys with all these other guys out. I think Maxi, there's a couple other options. But again, no Seth Curry. He's going to have all the ball handling responsibilities you could handle. Uh, probably see increased assists in this one most likely as well. On the other side of the ball, DeJounte Murray coming in at 10-2. I've probably been one of the biggest stands on DeJounte Murray all season long. He's got back-to-back -back 60 DK point games. He's put up 53.3 against his team earlier in the year. I think I just prefer Trey Young over him ever so slightly for a very similar price tag. Although I do think Murray will probably have the lower ownership. So again, if you're playing the ownership game and you want to avoid that, Murray's probably your guy over Trey. Just because I said it, a lot of people are going to be all, all the way invested in that game. Uh, less invested in this one. Very similar price tags. The writing's on the wall that he'll be lower owned. Uh, I kind of think I'll end up having more Derek White shares when it's all said and done. Uh, White's back to playing a full complement of minutes, and we know his upside is always around that 35 to 40 DK points, 6,200. Uh, he's a little too underpriced. He's got a good solid floor right around that 25 to 28 DK point game, where even on a down game, he's not really going to crush you. So I, when it's all said and done, I think I end up with more Derek White, but we'll have to see how these lineups shake out and just how much ownership I have in both those guys. 
Sixth game of the night. Memphis Grizzlies traveling to Dallas. Take it on the Mavs. For the Mavs, just Sterling Brown ruled out. For the Grizzlies, Steven Adams and Brandon Clark, both questionable. Kyle Anderson, Desmond Bain, Dylan Brooks, all ruled out. Tyus Jones as well. And then we have Tyrell Terry. Uh, he's in the G League. For a game total, uh, did not check this one yet, but I imagine it's fairly low. 216, Dallas favored by two and a half points. We'll start off here with Memphis. John Morant, 9,600. Won't end up there. Uh, don't love the game environment. Again, I'd rather play DeJounte. I'd rather play Trey Young. I'd rather go down to some of those other guys, like even a Fred Van Vliet, I think outscores him tonight. Keep your eye on the center news, because if Brandon Clark and Steven Adams are both rolled out, we can definitely go back to the well. Jaron Jackson, 6,500. I mostly see myself hitting the value in this one, though. Uh, D'Anthony Melton, 4,800. There's always risk associated with Melton. We know that, but we saw the minutes total in that last one. He played 27. He took 13 shot attempts. He does the across-the-board stats that we want to see, and he put up 37.5 DK points. So he's certainly an option. He drew a ton of ownership in that in that previous game against Milwaukee and kind of let everybody down. Uh, so there's going to be a bad taste in some people's mouth where I don't think he'll be chalk, but also uh, – we have options, so it's not like he is a must-play. But if he's going to be playing 27 minutes, absolutely, I, I would want some shares of him. Same thing, I, I'm interested in John Conchar all the way down to 4,400. The minutes totals are up. He played at least 32 minutes in the past two games. He's got a very safe and secure floor. Uh, we saw him just kind of the across-the-board stats. He's got a good rebounding upside. He's got good defensive upside with the blocks and the steals. He's going to handle the ball a little bit. He's never going to be the guy that drops 20 actual points. But if you're looking for safe, secure, multi-eligibility upside, it's Conchar. I think, again, I end up with more Conchar than I do Melton. I think he'll be lower owned. But both those guys are absolutely in play. If you wanted the GPP dart throw, it would be Zaire Williams. He's down at 3,700, has the same eligibility as Conchar, but much cheaper. Uh, he, as well, uh, same thing like Conchar, is averaging about 32 DK, uh, 32 minutes, over not DK minutes, real-life minutes over the past two games. His floor is just much, much lower. Uh, ceiling is definitely not as high, but that's why he's cheaper. Playing nobody on Dallas. Just that simple for me. So we can keep it moving there. Detroit traveling to Denver. Taking on the Nuggets here. For the Nuggets, Jamichael Green, Jeff Green, both questionable. We know that Jamal Murray and Michael Porter Jr. are out. Jamal Murray was just placed in the health and safety protocols. I feel like it's just going to creep up on us when this guy's ready. Uh, and then for the Pistons, Luca Garza, Jeremy Grant, Frank Jackson, Isaiah Livers, Kelly Olenek, Chris Smith, all ruled out. Kelly Olenek coming back and now in the health and safety protocols. Killian Hayes is questionable. This game has one of the larger spreads of the night at 11-point spread with Detroit uh, being the underdog. And then a 217.5 game total. So not really looking at anybody on Detroit. Just that simple for me. If you wanted to take a stab at Isaiah Stewart, sure. But I could see him getting himself into foul trouble pretty quickly in this one. I uh, don't mind that price tag, but he's going to have to shoulder the bulk of the center workload. Uh, and I think I actually prefer a guy like Trey Lyles over him at 4,600 with Kelly Olenek being in health and safety protocol. You should see significant time at the four and the five. So Trey Lyles is probably the one guy I could see myself having a couple shares of, but that's about it. And then over there on Denver. Now, where do we want to go? Do we want to look at Jokic? I think I prefer Harden over him. This game total just has blowout written all over it. 11-point spread, you know, obvious risk associated with it. I think that Jokic has a safer floor. Very similar ceilings compared to Harden, but when it's all said and done, I see myself going with Harden. Now, based on game script, we've talked about a lot of point guards in play, and if that's your reasoning for wanting to play him because you want to get some of these other guards, that would make sense. So I won't fault you there. Uh, looking at some of these other guys on the team, probably not going to be interested in much more outside of maybe a share or two of Jokic, like I said, but... I don't really think we need to run around and go anywhere crazy over here. If all those power forwards like Jeff Green and Joe Michael Green are rolled out, you might end up seeing a guy like Zeke Nagy play some extra minutes in a blowout. Uh, that I could certainly see. So if you're playing the blowout scenario, maybe look that way. You might see Aaron Gordon just continue to play heavy minutes like he's been playing over the past three games, 36, 44, 35. Uh, scored at least 40 DK points in all those ones. So he makes for a GPP option. But obviously, if the blowout happens, he would be limited ever so slightly. So just a little quick breakdown on it. Although I don't see myself having much ownership in that game. It'll probably be one of those pivot games. Brooklyn traveling to uh, Minnesota, taking on the Timberwolves in this one. Uh, to the injury report, we'll start off here with Brooklyn. Claxton is questionable. David Duke. Junior, Kevin Durant, Joe Harris, Paul Millsap all ruled out. Patrick Beverly and Jordan McLaughlin are both questionable, while Leandro Bomaro has been ruled out. 
238 and a half game total. It is a pick em. This is the highest game total next to that Atlanta Charlotte game. James Harden, you just heard me talk about him plenty of times. 11 7. He's worth it. No doubt about it. Shot attempts are up, even with Kyrie back in the lineup. This is an away game, so we can imagine that Kyrie will play. Uh, 24 in that last one, 21 in the game prior. Put up 73 points uh, in that game against San Antonio, where he triple-doubled with 37 actual points. So, yeah, no doubt about it. James Harden is in play. 11-7 is too cheap for him with no Kevin Durant. Kyrie Irving at 9,400. Yeah, sure, he's in play as well, but I think I'll just end up with uh, cheaper guys like Jimmy Butler, and I'd rather play Vendran Lee over him. Or I'd rather work my way up to either DeJounte Murray or Trey Young. So I just don't see myself landing on him. But I'm right, sure he's in play. Why not? Uh, you can still continue to look at the front court as they chop up minutes. I probably won't be going to Dayron Sharp. If anything, I'd rather lean more Aldridge in this matchup. At 5,400, they're going to need somebody that they can rely on who won't get into foul trouble uh, with a big body to go against Carl Anthony Towns. So that is pretty much my breakdown. That's it. Over there on Minnesota, Cat is down to 9,300. That is a great price tag for Cat. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna fault you if you want to look at Carl Anthony Towns. I don't think I will land on that ownership as much as most might. If anything, I'm probably gonna opt to go down to Jared Vanderbilt at 5600. I really do like this matchup for Jared Vanderbilt. He only played 21 minutes in that last one. I feel like this is one of those matchups where he will play 30 plus minutes. Uh, it has a big rebounding game upside all written all over it. He put up 38 DK points on them earlier in the year in 29 and a half minutes. Just don't know who they're going to use to body him. I just don't see how they're going to make that work. And this is where the mismatch and the advantage could be on the Minnesota side. Now, they will try to push the tempo against Minnesota. But that doesn't mean that they can't slow it down on offense. So I, I do like this matchup for Vanderbilt a whole lot. If Patrick Beverly is ruled out. It'll give a small bump to guys like Malik Beasley, uh, Jalen Noel. Beasley played 31 minutes in that last game. So keep your eye on the news. That game, we saw that Beverly only played six minutes and the biggest bump went to Beasley. And at 4,100, Beasley would certainly be an option. Took 16 shot attempts in that last one. Only knocked down six of them. Put up 23 DK points. But at 4,100, guy only needs about 25 points to pay that off. So we'll definitely certainly consider him. And then the main two key cogs with D'Angelo Russell and uh, Anthony Edwards. I think I prefer Russell ever so slightly. I wouldn't fault you for going to either one of them. I mean, Anthony Edwards now all the way down to 7,100. That, that's an egregious price tag. And you want to... Kind of want to take advantage of that. So when it's all said and done, actually, now that I'm looking at it, I'll probably end up with more Edwards than I would Russell, just based on that price tag and the eligibility of being able to play him at small forward. But I still think Vanderbilt might be my favorite play. I don't see him drawing any ownership in this one. Final game of the night, Utah Jazz traveling to Golden State, taking on the Warriors. For the injury report, Draymond Green, Andre Iguodala, James Wiseman all rolled out. Uh, Bojan Bogdanovich is probable. Trent Forrest, Rudy Gobert are questionable. Donovan Mitchell has been ruled out. And then Hassan Whiteside is questionable. So a lot to keep an eye on. 221 and a half game total. Golden State favored by one point. We'll start off here with Golden State. Now, obviously, Rudy Gobert is the guy that we're going to have to keep an eye on. Um, that's the biggest news of the hour. He was available to play against Friday against the Pistons. I assume he's going to be available in this one. It's Rudy Gobert. He's 9K. I don't think I'll end up falling on him too much. You know, we normally don't like to target centers going against Golden State, but when it's a guy like Rudy who's not going to get taken off the court at all, that's a different story. So is he going to be worth it? Probably. He'll probably put up around that 40 to 45 DK point mark, but a 9K, I don't see myself falling on him all too much. Jordan Clarkson now up to 6K. It's it's obvious. He's going to draw ownership. Uh, I probably won't be one of the guys on the bandwagon. I'd rather go down to Ingles at 45. This matchup very, you know, very well suits him. Uh, struggled in that last one from uh, the shooting perspective, only you know two of nine shots. But over the past two games with no Donovan, we've seen the upside of the ancillary. Five assists, six assists, three rebounds, five rebounds, a steal in both of those. Uh, this game suits Ingles' skill set. It's just that simple. I see myself being overweight on Ingles at 4,500 and having plenty of shares of him. And then if you wanted to look at like a guy like Conley or Royce O'Neal at 62 and then 47, sure, why not? I think there's better options out there. Conley's upside is probably right around 35 DK points. I could see you know playing to Derek White or some of these other options that we mentioned at 6,200 just over him. Uh, I think who else did we mention in that range? That you know Jaron Jackson, but a different position. Scotty Barnes at a different position. Uh, yeah, Derek White, maybe even Maxi. I'd prefer over him. So I don't see myself landing on Conley all too much. On the Golden State side of things, yeah, I'm never going to rule out Steph. Uh, do I see myself playing him? Probably not. I think I'll have more shares of guys like Trey and DeJounte. So probably not going to be looking at a whole lot over here. 
you know, Otto Porter is the one guy that kind of piques my interest at 5,500. I see him playing more than Kaminga in this one. Uh, Kaminga only played 15 minutes in that last game against Houston I, and 15 minutes against Indiana, despite him being in the rotation. He's not playing enough minutes, so I have a ton of interest. And obviously with him in the rotation and playing 15 minutes sort of limits a guy like, you know, Porter to playing that mid-20s workload. So don't see myself going to too much in this game outside of maybe a share of two of uh, Avada Porter Jr. That brings us home. That wraps up the slate. Now we will go to the player tier segment. When I'm always by myself, as you know, I give two for each. So now I know James Harden is the guy I mentioned the most. He is the easy spend up. So I will go elsewhere with Jimmy Butler and LaMelo Ball. I think both those guys are just a little bit too underpriced. I think they both have upside. I think they're both great matchups for the mid tier. I will go with CJ McCollum at 7,500. And then I do like Jared Vanderbilt in this one. Now, listen, 5,600 is not the best price tag. It makes them basically essentially have to get you 25 to 30 DK points to pay that off. But I, I do think he will get there. I think there is better upside plays available. But when you're just looking at a pure ownership standpoint, I certainly do like him. Uh, and also to mention, uh, you know, I should have led with this. There is not a ton of forwards available on this site that I am interested in. It's basically him, Scotty Barnes, and some of these spend up options. But so if you're not looking to spend up and you're looking for somebody to be able to play power forward for you, um, I think Vanderbilt is probably one of the one of the top options from that perspective. And then value. Joe Ingles and John Conchar, 4,500 and 4,400. I think both those guys have rock-solid, safe, and secure floors. They both have pretty decent ceilings for that price tag, around that 30 to 35 DK point. So I will go with them. I think that they are the two top options when I'm looking at my ownership that I will have as far as just rock-solid, safe, and secure value that probably can't go too wrong with. And, you know, we, we've seen the down games from both of them, which is probably right around that 17 to 18 DK points. But we're not we're not looking at the downside. We're looking at the, the safe and secure floor. Well, that may be the downside. I say there's probably about a 15 percent chance or 20 percent chance they hit that floor. I think there's about, you know, a good 40 to 50 percent chance that they hit that smack dab right in that 25 DK point range where we'll be uh, you know really ecstatic, ecstatic with it. And uh, let's see if I can get my, my math right here. That would leave about a 35 to 40% chance, I think, of them hitting their ceilings, which would be anything over 30. Uh, I like them. I like them both. I'll have shares of both of them. Now, let's go to our Thrive Fantasy picks of the day. A few decent options here. You know, I'm not going to be chasing some of these, like one, the 135 over on three and a half blocks for, uh, blocks for Pirtle. Don't think that's going to happen going against a guy like Embiid, but... I don't mind the Terry Rozier, 23 and a half points plus assists in this matchup. 100, flat even. I like that one. Definitely will have some shares in that for sure. Uh, and then the Cade Cunningham, four and a half assists. I don't love this matchup, but we know Cade's going to probably play pretty big minutes. So if you want to look that way, I wouldn't fault you one bit. That's a, that's a cool even, 100. And then, uh, you know, we could take the Clarkson maybe at 17 and a half. It's not terrible, 110. Sure. We'll go with those three. I think those three are pretty pretty nice options over there at Thrive Fantasy. Don't forget to use that promo code ETHOS when you head over there. Now, guys, that is it. That is all I have for you. Give me a follow on Twitter if you have a moment. At Mike Patria, M-I-K-E-A-P-O-T-R-I-A. Give us a thumbs up, five star, and subscribe wherever you are listening to this. Greatly appreciate it. You can find it on Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple, you name it. We are everywhere. We will be back tomorrow. It'll be, it'll be me, it'll be Harris. We'll be crushing that Monday slate for you guys. As always, enjoy your weekend. Take care, and let's take down some money. More than one in three people will face cancer in their lifetime. Unfortunately, fear can stop you from getting your cancer screening, but it won't stop cancer. Early detection can save your life. Don't wait for symptoms to appear to act. Cancer screening is safe, effective, and accessible for everyone, including free or low-cost screening programs. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com right now for free screening resources and recommendations from the American Cancer Society. Don't wait. Early detection can save your life. Go to cancerscreeninfo.com today. Cancerscreeninfo.com. You coming to bed, hon? Yep, honey, I'll be right there. Just got to turn out the light. 
Ow! 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 Ah! Gah! Some things never change. Like your kids always leaving tiny toys on the floor for you to step on. And Geico saving folks lots of money on their car insurance. Sweetie, I think I left the downstairs light on. P- please don't make me go. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more.